YouTube, we got a big one for you today. Lots of six-figure watches, a few special watches, and one, I would, you know, how they sometimes call watches Mickey Mouse watches, like something weird and stuff. One of those as well, but lots of special stuff, so stay tuned. Uh, I'm gonna start with a very special dial. What are your thoughts on this dial? Longer one, a Venturine with a moon face. I'm gonna try to move so it a little bit. So it's not really a Venturine. Well, it's, it's a little bit different uh, in terms of the process and, and the actual effect of it. Uh, but yeah, I love it is. how he says process. It's process. Right. Welcome Pro to America, Jack. Sure, uh, process. But yeah, no, this is a beautiful watch. So long story short, I mean, big, big premium on these again because of the dollar. But that's no surprise. If yeah, but they're also limited. If I'm not mistaken. Exactly. If you go across many, many brands, you're always going to find uh, one thing consistent, and that is, anytime you get into a funky dial, a lot less produced, most often limited, and the price goes up astronomically, and it's all in yeah. the dial. Daytona, mother of pearl diamond dial, yellow strap. Don't confuse this for the Beach Daytona. This is not a Beach Daytona. Again, these strap Daytonas, when they made them, uh, they didn't make many of them because case in point, they weren't popular. Any stone dials, period, they can't make in large scale. So I think this watch here is, is always really, really nice. Would you say, talking about special dials, as a general rule of thumb, there's gonna be a lot less of those pieces made, obviously. The money's always gonna do that. Would you say Mother of Pearl is in the lowest totem pole when it comes to special dials? I definitely think it is still very special. Any stone dial is special. Guess what, guess what else Because I have? each one will be unique, right? Guess what else I have? You have another one. I have another one, except <laughs> this one is... It's a non-diamond dial, so a little a dial. little less rare. Diamond dial being a little bit rare. Hey, let's talk value, right? This, yeah. This is... This is this to me is the biggest biggest mystery around that sixty thousand dollar price range. Yep. A full blown platinum fifty nine sixty, the first of its kind. This is the first one they came out with, yep. if you remember, right? Uh, with platinum gray dial, and this thing is just, I mean, annual calendar chronograph platinum, right? Automatic, like and flyback chrono, and it's a flyback chrono. The flyback essentially is while the chronograph is engaged, you can reset the chronograph to zero. Uh, without having to start and stop it uh, essentially while it's running. I was always a fan of the Master Compressor line from Jaeger La Coltra. Yeah. So the dual time from Jaeger Master Compressor line, they did it in alarm, they did it in the chronograph. I was always a big fan. Why? Because this is around that $5,000 price range. A Again, thousand hours also before yeah. any watch leaves their factory. People think, ah, a thousand hours, what's the big deal? Put that in perspective. That's a lot of hours. Yep. That's 50 days. It's it's not, you know, a little more. It's not, it's what you got over there. I got a ceramic Seamaster. This is an all black version, uh, which I really like. This all kind of dark look, stealthy look. It's so badass. This here, I think, I mean, you get the Seamaster heritage, Seamaster look in a unique format. I would look. call this one the Phantom. I, li I, like, I like the fact that it's got the markers that are subdued, the dial that's matte. In the car world, it's called murdering it out, and that's yeah. what they did with this Murder watch. They murdered out the watch. I'm always keen on picking up stuff from other brands that are, again, under the $10,000 price rates, and this is a Cartier Pasha. Moon phase, big date, automatic, in stainless steel. One of the more underappreciated designs. I think, I think yeah. that after the Santos, the tanks, I think this is a very, very iconic model. I don't know. There's too many like iconic models from Cartier. I'm talking about yeah. tank in if general. If you talk tank in general, I think Pasho is definitely up there. Um, I mean, there's also the crash. I'm talking about stuff that's like affordable, that's within reach. Oh I mean, yeah, listen, this is the coming, this is coming the... up. A stainless steel Cartier Pasho on a bracelet uh, in the world was right in line with the stainless steel Daytona. Probably one of the best selling watches of all time, Rolex GMT Master 2 Pepsi, uh, classic. Again, yesterday I was picking up more of the price point stuff and, and Tech Core certainly falls into that category. But what I did look at when I bought this particular watch is again, I looked at price point of under $5,000, extremely sporty. Again, PVD case, the layout, everything about this watch screens racing. I like the Tech Core chronographs. And again, I like it for the price. I like it for the overall look. Cartier Santos Skeleton Collection Privé. I've been a big fan of the Cartier Skeletons. The jury is still out if I like this particular skeleton versus the Excel Santos. Believe me, I'll get the plastic off eventually, guys, I promise. <laughs> or I'm gonna throw this watch out the window in a minute. I got, it. Got, it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. And this is more of a refined side of the skeleton. The Santos XL is more of a sporty side. Jury's still out of which one I like more. So anything collection privé, we buy as much as we can because yep. again, there's only so few of them made and I think these are the future collection and the likes of what's happening with the vintage Cartier market. It's gone insane. I got a nice little vintage Submariner. Can't go wrong with this. This is beautiful. A nice orange kind of pumpkin-y patina. This actually pumpkin was- pumpkin Yeah. Wow. Is that a technical term? Yeah, it is a technical. I just invented it. Uh, Bumpkin uh, patina, 
And the watch itself, I mean, is a classic, one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic. A lot of people say, well, some of the older, you know, vintage Rolexes, well, the bracelet is a little flimsier and everything. I actually like that. I like that little bit of yeah, the stretch. Not that, this, not that this thing is a stretch, but it's just- Yeah, no, this thing just... is in immaculate condition. That's what I was just looking at. I mean, this thing is beautiful. Classic Breguet, I picked up yesterday. Again, it's in a smaller size. And again, it, one of those price point watches yeah. around that $10,000 price range, plus minus, they don't, keep their finishes just for, you know, their high-end models. Correct. And you're always gonna get the top quality finishes that Breguet is known for. I wanna talk about ceramics. We talked about ceramic, and you know what? Cause I wanna show these two side by side, actually. When AP came out with the blue and the green ceramic, and that, this is where I feel they absolutely killed it. I mean, the look, the feel, the colors, the blue and the green, the colors, they pop so well. One of the best offshore releases in the last few years. But now I have to ask you your thoughts. This does have the 12, nine, that looks good. The 12, nine uh, and six. Do you prefer the three, six, nine new offshore layer? You know what's funny? I don't see that. Like to me, it doesn't matter. I see a really? chronograph. Like I almost never, I almost never notice. Like here's, let's talk about this white gold. Daytona, that's right. That's right. With, with, the, with the original configuration, speaking of which, Mother of Pearl Dow. Yeah. This is the Tahitian. This yeah, black Mother of Pearl. Uh, so if you look at that, if you look at what he's talking about, here's the chronograph going six, nine, 12. Here's a chronograph going the traditional nine, six, three, right? I don't even see that. Like I don't even notice that. Like, listen, it's a minute design difference. I personally prefer this. First of all, any mother of pearl dial you get is naturally created, so each one will technically be a unique piece. And then, second of all, a watch like this, black Tahitian mother of pearl, is just absolutely beautiful. You know, we're talking about springtime, summertime. Let's talk about the Audemars Piguet Offshore Turbion, uh, executed in a limited edition. I forget how many exactly these made. Hot take, which one? Offshore. <laughs> concept see i'm yeah, taking the offshore go, it's more I'll wearable go, i'll go with i think the offshore is more wearable they're both they're both tough to wear because yeah. they're both uh you know pretty bigger big. watches and personally i mean for the money this thing trades around that mid 150s you know uh depending on how complete it is etc and personally tough time choosing between the two so maybe i'll just wear both what do you think maybe something for the ladies this time wow Rubber. we have a ladies watch rubber strap aquanaut this is a this is a really pretty watch diamond bezel white dial on a white strap. I think this is absolutely Let me ask you a question. For a lady. Ladies Nautilus on a bracelet or a ladies Aquanaut on a rubber strap? A lady wearing a nice rose gold Nautilus is, I think, perfect. Let me ask you a question. Like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, guys always ask, are you a boob man or are you an ass man? Are you <laughs> just a watch man? If a girl came up yeah. to you, Watch and she was wearing like an impressive watch. Is that the first thing you'd be looking at? Hell yeah. Two-tone Daytona. I mean, it's it's as good as you can get. This, I know because I bought this watch. You're going to get a Daytona. I think two-tone is a great one. And this is certainly... You know, it's funny. I've been talking about two-tone Daytona as being a great value for many, many years. I, uh, I remember I was at an antique show a few years back. And there was Zenith two-tone Daytonas trading around like a $10,000 mark. Which is insane. Some of my clients ask, hey... What would, would, if I was to put away a few of these, I said I would put a, at ten thousand dollars. I would put away as many as you can. I mean, these right here, you're going to be looking at about the eighteen thousand, maybe a little. They bit literally more have for, doubled in a few years. Yeah, for for a complete set, you're going to be looking maybe a little bit more. But yeah, th this watch right here, I think, is tremendous value. And if we're talking tremendous value, we can also talk about independence. independence H Moser. This is absolutely beautiful. Love this kind of, again, it's fume, vignette, whatever you want to call it, dial. But it's also movement because again, we talked about this last time. They're one of the few people who can actually say they make everything in house because the escapement has, you know, the hairspring, uh, the pallet fork, all the escape wheel. What Moser did was create an escapement system where they can literally unscrew and take out that entire system and then service the watch and then fix the escapement separately so that they're not, you know, like finicking with, with small parts and it just makes it a much quicker turnaround time. Sometimes in our industry, we do run into watches that we like to dub Mickey Mouse watches. Of course, what I actually have is I have the original Gerald Genta Jump Hour Mickey Mouse watch. With the retro retrograde, retrograde, retrograde minutes. minutes. And by retrograde, you'll notice the minutes go across the top here and it's Mickey Swing at Golf Club. Uh, again, this thing just came in. I'm gonna have to check it out. It's a bit of an old watch, but this is a pretty rare watch. And don't look at this as like, oh, it's just a Mickey Mouse watch. This is a watch that trades around that 20 to $22,000 yeah. price range. I mean, you're getting a, a watch from arguably the most, I mean, it's, he, I'll just say he's the most important design maker, watch maker of all time. Ooh, uh, 59, another, another 5960. 
stainless steel, white dial. We talked about these numerous times, you know, in terms of value. 5960 in general being the annual calendar uh, chronograph uh, from Patek Philippe. And only a few of these made. Obviously, the fewer ones were the ones with the black dial. They only produce this for six years, which is a short production run. They didn't make a lot of these. But once, once these things go over 100,000, that's when people usually tend to wake up. It is apparently raining mother of pearl dial. Daytona's yeah, on a strap today. This is like a pinkish mother of pearl. And again, it just goes to show that mother of pearl comes in all shades and colors. It's yep. literally a shell. I kind of like this one. This one is a little bit more subdued. I'd like to see this with a diamond dial as well. I mean, there used to be days when you could walk into a Rolex dealer when you were buying these and you can actually yeah. choose which mother of pearl dial you want. Choosing anything at a Rolex boutique Nothing now, is, those days are over. So let's show one special piece. And, and one special piece I wanted to show you is the Audemars Piguet, a Royal Oak Turbion hammer dial frosted bezel. Sheesh. At some point when you become successful enough, this is white gold, by the way, you can take an existing model, do it over and over and over, seemingly the same. But for true lovers, they look at these small, subtle differences. And I gotta let you guys zoom in on this dial. Same. You'll notice why it's called a hammer dial, because it's a dial that's literally hammered. Uh, I gotta say, I wasn't sure if I'd like this watch. I was a little afraid it'd be too it much. Works, but doesn't it? This thing is sick. It it's works. absolutely it phenomenal. Works. And yeah, the, the best part I mean, about it is the dial tends to play yeah. in the light. But it also plays with the bezel, right? So it all kind of pops together and mingles together. So it's, it's really uh, cool. Verdict is I really like this watch. Marco's favorite brand. Is it safe to say that Vacheron is your favorite brand or are you now leaning more towards independence? Uh, no, I mean, I've always been leaning more independence. They're my favorite serial manufacturer, if that makes sense, they're right? So favorite, in terms so, of okay. serial production, they're, they're probably my favorite, yes. Yeah. Another blue dial uh, overseas. And the reason we keep picking these up now Can't is because, keep them in stock. because they've become finally affordable. People are finally yeah. saying, wait a minute, I can pick them up around that retail price range now. I mean, you said it perfectly, right? This is a watch that's now trading around MSRP, maybe a little bit more for a newer kind of example, but you're gonna have to spend, you know, upwards of 30, 40, 50,000 at the boutique and wait a little bit to get this watch, or you can just pay a small premium and get it brand new on the gray market. You just have to do the math and figure out what's good for you. That's really it. Classic Batman, can't go wrong. Not much to say, GMT Master 2 to me is the best model line from Rolex. These, again, another one that's coming up in price, so. Brigade Marine Chrono. It's a chrono or non-chrono? Uh, non-chrono. Yeah, uh, non Brigade, it's, a, it's just a Brigade automatic big date. Yeah. Uh, in stainless steel. We're going into the era of 2004, 5, 6, 7, leading up to the crisis. And Brigade was a manufacturer said, well, how do I get in on the craze of bigger, sportier watches? The Brigade Marine Chronograph in rose gold was a watch that was selling at around list price and I can get, could not get enough of them. Extremely popular in the Russian market, Ukrainian market, all the former Soviet republics. They were trading upwards of $30,000 at the time where the retail was probably about 27, 28. Wow. This would be a much cheaper option if you decided to go the route of yep. getting that same thing. And the best part about them is Brigade doesn't cut corners. So everything about it still screams your baby, but what they did is they gave you the size, yep. they gave you the sporty feel. Because Yoshe dial also, big day complicated. I mean, we're talking about price point pieces, another one, about $10,000. Yeah. I mean, Brigade just one of the most underappreciated manufacturers. I tend to say the best for last. And it's very hard in this unboxing because there were a lot of great watches in here yep. already. At a glance, you guys are like, what in the hell even is this? This is one of the more special pieces that they made and again this is number two i know they made a few of these i think i think they made five if i'm not mistaken don't quote me on that and what they did here is a turbion skeleton gmt it's i don't think it's a gmt it is you have, the, you, sure? you, have, you have the 24 hour indicator right here that's the power reserve that's a date <laughs> yeah i hate i hate i hate marco when he's right <laughs> to hear Roman say he's never seen one before is, I mean, the guy's been doing this forever, you know, as long as, long as anybody else. We all know, we talked about this previously, how addition of a precious metal bracelet, especially with diamonds, you know, adds to the rarity tremendously because they just don't make very many. Where ability-wise, you can actually take that bracelet off, put it on a regular strap with a buckle, mm -hmm. and you have a whole different watch. You can dress it down, you can dress it up as much as you want. It's blingy, but it's not. I don't even know how to explain yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I mean and we're it's also- It's just subtle. Yeah, no doubt. So yes, guys, like I said, we like to save the best for last. I, I think even though we show some pretty kick-ass stuff, I think this is the the best watch of the unboxing. Though the crown jewel of the unboxing, yeah. I like that. YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.